Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we are talking about a new ROM for the POCO X3 Pro known as Project Blaze. Now this is the first time I'm looking at this particular ROM. I've installed it a couple of days back and since then I've been using it and this is a complete review. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash, let's get going. So let's see what we have here. We have a Project Blaze Official 1.0. Now this is the first version. That is the reason they are calling it 1.0. This is of course based on Android 12 L or Android 12.1. The release date is 14th of April 2021. Now let's see what we have in terms of change log over here. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So it does say initial release based on Android 12.1, merged April security patch, added face unlock, added app lock, this, that. So this is a very comprehensive change log. So I'm not really going to go through the entire list, but we're going to talk about the experience of this particular ROM. And this of course comes with G apps pre-installed. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that you have your usual stuff going on. Let's disable auto brightness over here. You have Monet UI, themed icons, all sorts of things happening. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which is in Android 12.1 on Poco X3 Pro running smooth as butter on the 120 hertz mode. And that is a good thing. Even when scrolling, if you, you know, go to the home screen, you will notice that the experience is pretty cohesive, pretty smooth. And that is what I like about Android 12.1 ROMs. Now, at the bottom, you do have the Google search bar and a bunch of icons over here. If you swipe from the top to bottom, you have your standard Android 12 or 12.1 affair going on with the edit tiles option over here. Then you have the power menu option in the center and you also have advanced reboot over here, which is built in, which is a good thing. You have the settings shortcut available as well. Now let's look at the quick tiles. You do get a built-in screen recorder, which does give you a ton of options. Now this clearly means that Project Blaze is more geared towards customization, which is always a good thing. We will get to see a bunch of options. So let's see what we have here. We have internal and external audio recording. Show stop dot is an option over here. Lower quality for smaller file size, bigger file size limit 15 gigabytes. So let's click on start recording here. You get a timer as always, and then it starts recording with a notification which is a good thing. Now let's do the Google feed test over here. Now I'll tell you this, the jitteriness in screen recording is definitely there. Okay. Now, yeah, I don't know why the UI is stuttering, definitely stuttering here. It'll be interesting to see how it looks in, uh, you know, the playback thing. So we've stopped recording over here. The video has processed. Let's in yeah, I don't know what it is with Android 12.1 ROMs on the three devices that we're using the K20 Pro, the Mi 11X and the Poco X3 Pro. The screen recording external audio is up, down, up, down. Now, this is a known issue. I really hope developers can fix it. Now, apart from this, if you again go to the quick tiles, you will see you have extra dim, you have battery saver, you have auto rotate on and off, all the usual stuff. But if you go to the edit menu, you will see that you have color inversion over here, dark theme. You also have caffeine, which is a good thing. Ambient display is present as well. Heads up, enable, disable. You do have the option of gaming mode, reboot menu. So you do have a, you know, quite a considerable amount of customization in the quick tiles itself. Now let's go to the app drawer and see what will we have over here. You have a very, very basic camera application, which is now a very common thing amongst almost all custom ROMs these days. So, you know, no fancy portrait mode or 4K video like Gcam over here. Very, very basic stuff. But the smoothness, when you're not recording the screen, the app icon animations are just splendid. You know, they are just on par where I expect them to be not too relaxed and not too fast. So that in all gives you a very, very cohesive and smooth experience, right? Now, apart from this, as far as the apps are concerned, you don't really have a ton of bloatware. That's a common thing with ASP ROMs. Let's actually go to settings over here and you will see that the settings UI looks ever so slightly different. There are no major, major changes over here, but the settings UI does look different. So if you go to about phone, you will see that this whole layout that is present over here, it looks really, really beautiful. And this particular shape of the phone that is displayed as an icon over here or a picture, it's very nice. It, it'll be good to have a phone which perfectly looks like this symmetrical bezels, all the, all the four sides and stuff like that. Now, 
The processor is MSM Nile, that is probably a code name. 5160 mAh battery, Android 12 L. And let's see what security patch we have over here. Uh, April security update. So we are on the latest security update. It is running the Mochi kernel. SE Linux status is enforcing. So in all probability, Google Play Store should be certified. Safety net should be okay. And Wideman L1 certification should be present as well. Now let's actually uh, explore the other aspects of this particular ROM. So the moment you go to settings, you have network and internet in which you do have the usual stuff connected devices, usual stuff, nothing new over here. Now let's go to display over here. You have adaptive brightness, lock screen customization, pretty st you know standard stuff as far as uh, custom ROMs are concerned. Uh, there is something called as advanced settings over here. For some reason that is not working. So that's fine. You have dark theme, display size, colors. You can keep them to be boosted and stuff like that. Minimum and maximum refresh rate is set to 120Hz. That is the reason you see that the phone is performing this fluid and this smooth. Low power refresh rate is a good option to have because if you are on low power, your refresh rate will go down to 60Hz. It will definitely help you to, you know, preserve some battery. You have tap to wake up and you have prevent accidental wake up as well. Now moving on, you have a dedicated customization menu, which is known as the Blaze House. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we have headline and body font. So you can actually go ahead and change font to whatever you want on the fly. Now, this is a feature which is, you know, not really talked about a lot. But if you have a lot of font options and you don't have to go through the, you know, pain of rebooting the device after changing the font, I think that is a very decent feature to have a force close error there. So don't worry, initial release and things will get it better as time passes by you can have a ton of different icon packs you can have a different signal icon styles wi-fi icon styles icon shape is an option so you can have cylindrical i prefer squircle that is a good thing moving on you have traffic indicators which can be enabled you can see over here traffic indicators are enabled there are different battery styles that you have and you have battery percentage as well. Now you do have double tap to sleep, show 4G instead of Volti, Volti icon, camera mic access indicator. So these Android 12 features can be enabled and disabled. That's the beauty of a custom ROM. Next up, you have the brightness slider customization. You can select the position in the quick settings panel. Apart from this, double tap to sleep, lock screen, charging info, these options are available. And then you have vibrate to connect, waiting, disconnect, volume rocker, wake and toggle torch when screen is off. So Blaze House doesn't really have ancient OS level of customizations, but it does have options which will definitely improvise your experience when you're using a custom ROM. Now, if you go to wallpaper in style, you do have themed icons and Monet UI is present. So, you know, it does a very decent job of customizing your look and stuff like that. So you do have curated culture and all these wonderful pictures over here. I did notice one small issue. No. Okay. So yeah, Monet UI is working fine along with themed icons, which is always a good thing. So let's go back to settings and you do have the sound customization in which you do have some options as you can see on the screen, but not many options there. So that is a good thing. You go to apps, you have all the features over here, but no dedicated gaming mode that is missing. Notification history is present. As you can see, you can enable and view your complete notification history. So that is a good thing. Now coming to the security part, you have fingerprint and face unlock. Both of them are present and they work absolutely fine. So nothing to worry there. If you go to the battery menu, you don't have, you know, the enhanced touch sampling rate or optimization profiles. Now that is something I think should be included or should be included in the next update. Now talking about the battery backup on this particular ROM, 33 watt charger works absolutely fine. It doesn't really take a very, very long time to charge this particular ROM and device. And the battery backup, come on, you have a 5,160 milliamp hour cell and it gives you around six to seven hours of mixed usage, which is a pretty, pretty good experience. Now you do have other basic Android 12 features available, but if you go to system and if you go to gestures, you will see that you have swipe to screenshot available that also gives you access to, let's see here, direct access to Google Lens. So that is a good thing. And let's see if we can find expanded screenshot. Yep, capture more option is present. So even in the settings menu, you do have a you know, few options which allows you to customize a lot of gestures like double tap to check the phone is present. 
back tap is something that is missing over here so that could be added as well now all said and done this rom looks solid it can definitely be used as a daily driver the ui is great the only few features that are missing i have mentioned and the screen recorder could be you know better as well but what about the performance you ask because i've given you the battery backup and charging times right so first off let's go ahead and talk about the cpu throttle test in google photos we will also check if it has unlimited storage available or not so let's go to google photos over here we are still recording the okay yep so it is free and unlimited so that is a good thing now if you go to library and you go to screenshots you will see that the cpu throttled to 84 percent with mochi kernel i was expecting better the average score was 171 281 gips with 192 451 being the highest now if we talk about n2 to benchmark as far as the you know performance is concerned 580 5581 decent score there i've seen this device score 590 to 600 thousand so nothing really impressive there just about your normal custom rom stuff and if we talk about the geekbench scores single core and multi-core 763 single core 2547 multi-core so will this rom be able to handle 90 fps bgmi not really looking at the performance numbers 60 fps you should be doing pretty good all in all project plays a very very good start in the right direction smooth rom with a ton of customization options and the latest android version let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care goodbye